Hello, and welcome back to Tampa International Airport. Today I'm returning to Austin, completing my round trip journey on Southwest. Our journey begins where we left off, taking the people mover back to the main terminal from the rental car center. As I mentioned in the previous video, the process of actually checking in and getting through security is an interesting one at KTPA. Because Tampa is a hub and spoke airport, you have to take a people mover from the central terminal to the outer airside terminals, and in order to do so, you have to check in and scan your boarding pass. Check-in for Southwest is serviced by one of many kiosks located in either the rental car center or main terminal, or by the usual check-in desk. We chose to check in at the kiosk located just outside the entrance to the people mover for all C gates. Once checked in, you have to scan your boarding pass at the gates in order to be allowed on the people mover to any of the outer gates. What's interesting to note is that security is located in each of the airside terminals instead of the central main terminal. Granted, you still have to scan your boarding pass to get there, but it seems like an interesting choice to put it there. The security lines in Terminal C were relatively short, but it was made even easier in part that I had access to TSA PreCheck. Aside from the gates, Tampa's Terminal C houses a few shops and restaurants. There isn't a huge selection of options, however, so if you're really looking for something in particular, I suggest doing the bulk of your shopping in the central terminal before heading to your gate. A nice benefit of the hub and spoke design is the proximity to the ramp and runways, which affords some awesome views of departing aircraft, like this US Air Force Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker. My flight home is Southwest 1752, departing from gate C-35. Our aircraft is November 8638 Alpha another one of Southwest's many Boeing 737-800 aircraft. This aircraft was delivered to Southwest in July of 2014, and still features Southwest's older Canyon Blue livery. All right, awesome, thank you. As I mentioned in my previous video, Southwest uses a first-come, first-served seating arrangement. Each passenger is given a boarding number in relation to the order in which they checked into the flight in the day prior, and can then choose from any available seat on the aircraft. Today, I'm number C2 the second person in the third boarding group, but one of the last people to get on the aircraft. I thought for sure I wasn't going to be able to find a window seat, but lo and behold, there were a few available towards the back of the aircraft, and I chose seat 27A. The cabin of this aircraft features Southwest's older seating, which includes only a single seat back pocket. The leather of the seat in front extends down to meet the tray table, and overall the cabin feels a bit tired but for a short flight, it's not too bad. Southwest seats offer 17 inches of width and 32 inches of pitch, as well as the usual overhead amenities, such as lights, air vents, and an attendant call button. As we got ready for pushback, the captain mentioned that there would be some storms in the area and noted that we would have to head north before turning west towards Austin. I looked at the weather radar on my phone and I could see nothing that looked like it would interfere with our scheduled flight plan. Pushback was a little behind schedule, but only by a couple minutes, and it wasn't long before we were taxiing out to runway one left for departure. We taxied out via Golf 6, Charlie, Alpha, Victor, Victor 1, Whiskey, and Whiskey 1, where we then lined up behind a couple other aircraft.
Finally, we were lined up and ready for takeoff on our journey back to Austin. Once again, in-flight entertainment is provided for free on any personal device with an internet connection. The selection is limited, but there's enough to fill the gap between takeoff and landing. The snack and drink service started not long after leaving Tampa, with a selection of four drinks, Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, and water, and the standard Southwest snack mix. Departing north out of Tampa offers some awesome views of the Florida coast, so take some time to enjoy the scenery while in the air. And while we've got a second, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps me out. I've got a lot of awesome content coming in the next couple months, so stick around if you want to see more. As I mentioned earlier, some weather in the area had rerouted us up north over the Florida Panhandle and then west across the southern U.S. It's not long before we're back in Texas airspace and flying over the city of Houston. Houston's hobby airport is the easiest to pick out from the sky. It is one of Southwest's many hub airports and was one of the first four airports to be served by Southwest. In addition, the Houston skyline is an impressive sight from above, with the Metroplex filling the window. Another landmark visible from the air is the Luke Farm, a forest of trees planted to spell out the name of the farm by owner Jimmy Luke, and, according to AtlasObscura.com, is used by NASA to evaluate satellite imagery and the spatial resolution of astronaut photographs. After about 90 minutes, we're entering the pattern for arrival on runway 18 right at KAUS.
After a short taxi, it's time to deplane and make our way out of the airport. Thank you. We arrived at gate 18, so the walk to the exit is only a couple hundred feet. If you want to see more of the airport, I suggest taking a look at my previous video linked above or in the description below, where I walk through the majority of the west side of the airport. Overall, my experience with Southwest has been Thank great. You. Both flights were on time and boarding was quick and easy. I do wish there were more options for drinks on board, but that's nothing a quick pit stop in the airport prior to boarding can't fix. Anyways, that's all I have for now. I have some really cool stuff in the works for the next couple of weeks, including a non-stop flight from Austin to Honolulu, and some train trips from Los Angeles and Dallas. Thanks for flying with me today, and I'll see you in the next one.